Well, when we came out of the big drought, Fiona, it was uh, the question on everybody's tongue about, you know, how can we improve our native pastures? How can we bulk them up a bit? And how best to do it? So they wanted some answers about what fertilisers to put on. Um, then they started thinking about alternate fertilisers because if you remember the cost of fertilisers was going through the roof and people were just a bit concerned. Well I, d I had no hesitation of, uh, uh, of offering this sm very small plot to uh, get some answers to well whether single super was working or not and um, and then there are a lot of other products being heavily advertised and they weren't doing the, uh, they weren't giving any economic return. This alternative fertiliser project has compared a range of alternative fertiliser products to single superphosphate, a conventional treatment, as well as a do-nothing control. And we have conducted it here at this site over a six-year period to allow us to build up a clear picture of what is happening with, with these fertiliser products over time. Replicated plot experiments like this are really important for us having confidence in the evidence. It's not just that the treatment worked well on one site, it's not just that it worked well on two of the replicates, but it worked well on a number of the replicates across a number of your sites and across a number of the projects. And the more replication we can have, the more confidence we get in the information is going to extrapolate to my farm. As soon as you start taking account of both the quality and the quantity, it tends to pull the results apart even further. So those products that have grown more tend to have higher quality in, in energy and protein and digestibility. So that, that, in, that lifts animal production. So they've grown more grass, the animals are going to perform better on it. If you start putting dollars on that, the pool of potential income you're getting from a hectare is, is getting greater than the products that didn't grow as much and the quality wasn't there. This work has been conducted because there has been a lot of anecdotal claims made around the use of alternative fertiliser products and what they can do for you, but there has been little scientific evidence to validate any of those claims. So this piece of work down here in southern New South Wales in the Tableland areas has been one of the key pieces of research to help put some scientific rigour around the use of alternative fertilisers. soil test target of 15 milligrams per kilogram and if we use, um, I'm not sure if many of you are familiar with five easy steps uh, as a guide to fertiliser uh, use, the first thing you need to do is determine your soil fertility and where you want to be. I think this has been a highly valuable day because this sort of work cuts through a lot of the misinformation that is out there for farmers on the fertiliser story and there's very few trials that have gone over an extended period to evaluate various products in a scientific way and I think it's highly valuable and highly relevant to farmers today to look into this information and look at the science behind testing of these products. I, I thought the field day was very worthwhile. We, we actually have always been a little interested in um, alternative types of fertilisers. A lot of them are being peddled on the market today. It was great to get a scientific basis to make decisions as to what how you should go ahead and spend your money uh, for the most profitable outcome. The results that we've got from these native pastures that have got subclover through them, it was applied years ago in the 50s, but it certainly is present. And when you put phosphorus and sulphur, you know, the mix of nutrients on 
particularly phosphorus and sulphur though, you see big responses in these native grasses.